right. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Auto Repair Marketing Podcast. I'm your host today, Brian Walker, and my guest today is Coach Chris Cotton. You probably all know Coach Chris. Uh, Chris and I are going to be talking about marketing for the slow times in your business. But first, I want to thank our sponsors, RepairPal, for providing this episode. RepairPal certified network of shops are trusted by millions of customers each month. Learn more at RepairPal.com forward slash shops. All right. Well, I'm I'm glad that we can do this podcast together. This is something that stemmed out of our uh, Facebook group, uh, the Auto Repair Marketing Mastermind. And for those of you who are listening who are not in that group, go check it out, uh, facebook.com, um, and just do a search for Auto Repair Marketing Mastermind. You must be a shop owner or manager uh, to uh, to get in that group, but. Um, it was a, there was a question that was posted by Cheryl Brown and Cheryl said, I'm curious to learn what other shops do for marketing in the slower months from the end of December to March. I've been tossing around the idea of mailers, thoughts, suggestions. Thanks. And Chris, you saw that post and you commented on it. We had, uh, we had some pretty good discussion, uh, on, uh, on that. What, you know, what are your thoughts when you hear a question like that? Well, so, so first of all, thanks for, for having time and taking time to get with me. I know this was posted in August and here it is the end of September. We've been trying to find a time to get together to actually make this work. So um, I, I think it's a great question and it was a timely question. She asked it in August. So I think that's great. She was looking forward to the end of the year. But when somebody asked me that, my first question is, is like, okay, are all the other things in your business working well? Or what can you do from a car, point, uh, car count standpoint, average estimate standpoint, and average repair order standpoint to make sure you're maximizing that before you go into the marketing side of that question? You know, it's funny. I actually just wrote a blog post, um, and uh, the title of it is something to the effect of how to know when you're not ready for marketing. And it's about all of those things that you're talking about right now. We'll have a podcast um, that's either going to come out. Uh, it's probably going to be the next episode, actually. It might be the one after that. Uh, so it'll be within one or two episodes of this one. And it'll be on that topic of how to know when you're not ready for marketing. And, you know, shop owners and just small business owners in general, I know that I used to fall into this um, anytime that things weren't really great in the business. The first thing that I started looking at was marketing. But marketing isn't always the thing that you is going to fix the problem. Sometimes there's some business practices there that may need to be fixed first. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So if you're, if you're, again, we talked about if your average estimate is not to go or your average repair order is not to go, then those are things we need to fix first. But the other thing we have to do is make sure that we have this on the marketing calendar. And I know we're both proponents of, of always being marketing or making sure that we're, you know, we're, um, on the plus side of that. Cause I, you know, one thing is I was just in a, uh, 20 group meeting and one of the guys in our 20 group was like yeah things were really busy and so I just shut off all marketing for the months of um, May, June and July and I'm like oh my gosh I, I just about had a heart attack in the room when he said that and he goes and now we're having to turn it all on so for first of all don't ever turn it all off right and and I mean you're um, you're a better person to talk about than, than I am as far as always be branding but um, it's, it's, it's just, it's an interesting thing. And I've seen it in the industry for years and years and years where people just get to some point and just shut it off. Um, I, I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. There, I actually, I just recorded an episode a few episodes back uh, titled Stop Stopping. And, you know, it's not just about marketing. It's about everything in life. Um, I was in a, uh, this, uh, we call it a man camp. <laughs> Uh, that I went to, uh, like a boot camp kind of thing. And one of my big takeaways from it was, was to stop stopping. And it was in everything. It was, with, you know, with my, di what, my diet, my working out, you know, all of these, because I'm, I mean, gosh, I've been overweight all my life. Uh, you know, but I get to a place where I'm, I'm still overweight, but comfortable, you know, so I'll diet down to that. And then, when I get comfortable, I stop and, you know, we do the same thing in our business with, with marketing and, you know, with, uh, 
you know, managing our KPIs and just doing all of the things that we have to do in our business, you know, we, uh, there'll be a problem and then we'll start doing everything the way we need to until we get comfortable again. And then we stop doing it. And especially in marketing, if you do that, you're never going to grow. You're just going to ride this roller coaster. And, you know, if you ever look at a, a roller coaster, there's an average height in there somewhere of that roller coaster. And if every time you, you ride this marketing roller coaster to the top and you shut off your marketing, well, you're never going to grow because you're bringing it down to the bottom again, you know, before you can, uh, before you can actually get past that high point. Right. And, and really when I talk to shop owners, I tell them when they, when they move from working in their business to working on their business, there's really three things that they have to, or that I think they're in charge of and really have to pay attention to. Um, the, now there are other things under those, but three main things. So one is making sure you have the, the car count to be successful. And a lot of people think I need more, I need more, I need more, but you need the right amount for your processes and procedures to allow you to do what you need to do. So that's why I say not more car count, but car count to be successful. Number two is you have to make sure that you're taking care of your internal uh, customers, which is your intern, your employees. And three, you have to be on good financial footing to to make sure that you can keep the doors open, the family's happy, work life balance, all of that. So uh, when I'm thinking about the car yeah. count and the correct car count, I'm going to throw this back to you and say, okay, if we're setting up a marketing calendar. Um, uh, and and I and in my mind I'm thinking of the way we used to do it a couple of years ago. But for you now, like if it's so we're we're doing this the end of September, like what month should I buy, what month should I be planning for if I'm in September? Like is that three months down the road, four months, six months, and then how far back do you have to go to plan for November, December, January? Well, in a perfect world, you're planning your marketing on a on a yearly. Uh, you know, basis. So uh, it, this is around the time of year where you're going to start thinking about your marketing plan for the following year. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a September, October. And of course, you know, once you get into November, you're getting a little late, but a lot of people will do their planning in November and some in even December. But the big thing is, is to make sure that you actually do that planning. And, uh, you know, when, when you're planning, you want to plan out the entire year and you can go back and you can look at the peaks and valleys throughout the year. And, you can adjust your, your marketing during those times because, you know, there are times where you get so busy that there are particular types of marketing that you may want to back off on. You know, if you are, if you're scheduling three or four weeks out, then maybe you don't want to go as heavy on your Google AdWords, which is going to get people in the door like right now, but you want to adjust your marketing to be doing more of the, uh, the, the, what I call things that build equity in your marketing, your search engine optimization, the, the, uh, the stuff that gets people to know, like, and trust you, you know, so, uh, to, to be doing more of that in the peaks of the, or leading into the peaks of the year, I should say. And then when you're leading into the valleys of the year is when you want to ramp up the marketing that gets people in right now. Uh, and then of course, if you can do the things in your business that will allow for the growth, maybe it's an expansion of the shop. Uh, maybe it's hiring that additional tech or two to where when things are great, you can still be pouring the fuel on the fire to get people in, you know, even during those peaks, because that's how you're going to, to grow. But when we talk about, you know, this question that Cheryl asked, we're, we're making some assumptions here because we don't know Cheryl's business. We, she may have a great average repair order. She may have the right uh, car count. Um, you know, she may have her profit margins dialed in. Uh, we don't, we don't know any of that. So as the marketer, when I have somebody that's asking about marketing during the slow times of the year, the thing that I always think about is how's your marketing as a whole? Because we, we love marketing around holidays and stuff like that. It's fun. You know, there, there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do with that. But if you have to do it, like if you're having to market around the holidays or if you're having to market around particular times of the year because they're slow, I always wonder, is there something that's not optimized with the marketing that you're just doing day in, day out? throughout the year. And, and I answered Cheryl and I'm going to, I'm going to read what it, like verbatim, what my uh, reply was in this, uh, in the Facebook group. 
I said, making sure your marketing is rock solid every other day of the year will make the biggest impact during the holidays. Holiday specials like Toys for Tots and other ideas like that are great and they give you content for your campaigns. But really, even though we love talking about the fun marketing stuff like this, the boring stuff you do every day is the best thing to fill in slow times. Make sure your SEO and Google ads are optimized as best as possible. Make your website a true authority on the topic of auto repair in your geographic area. Use your social media channels to share things that people that will get people to know, like, and trust you and your team. Read the book they ask you answer and put what you learn into action. Do these things and you'll be doing holiday campaigns because it's fun, not because you need to. If all of this is in place, then have a blast with the holiday marketing. It can be really fun to do. Kim Walker always has great ideas for this stuff. Timing is about right for a podcast, too. Thanks for the great topic of discussion. And, of course, we're doing that podcast now. Uh, and Kim is going to be doing one on the, the fun holiday marketing ideas. Like, we got Halloween coming up, doing trunk or treats and stuff like that. But, you know, that's always the, the question that I have is... If you're needing to market for around a particular time, what does your marketing look like every other day of the year? No, that's pretty cool. And then so so one of the questions I always have um, is about lag time. Like if you're doing, say, mailers, like they say, I think you got to send your mailers out, you know, religiously for three months before you even see the first one back and then continue from there. So how much lag time or, or can you give us kind of like maybe a rule of thumb on lag times for some of the marketing um, so that, OK, we need to start in April to have an effect on uh, Halloween or something like that? Yes, it's typically a 60 to, day, 60 to 90 day cycle that we see uh, in, in lag time, but that's 60 to 90 days from the time that you actually start doing it, not 60 to 90 days from the time that you start planning it. And that's what gets people a lot of times is, you know, they'll, they'll say, oh, well, I've got 90 days and they're 90 days out and they haven't actually even thought about what they're going to, to do. Um, there, uh, you know, your, your shop should be working off of a marketing plan and that plan has got that lag time built into it and you know what you're going to be doing, uh, at, at every time during the, the year. Um, you know, I think back to when I had my business and we, you know, we marketed our shop and we had some great success, but we weren't really marketers then, you know, we were still, we were still learning this. And if you go back to our episode two of, of our podcast, the auto repair marketing podcast, you get to hear our story. Um, marketing is one of those things that we kind of fell into and, you know, it just turned out that, that when we went all in on it, on it, we were really good at it. But, you know, when, when we did have our shop, we, uh, we had success, but there were a lot of things that we didn't get right. And that was one of them. It was the, uh, you know, planning things too late for, uh, for that lag time, as you call it. And I remember it would be every year around Thanksgiving, we would be thinking about sending out a Christmas card. It's like, man, this is too late. You know, we needed, we needed to be preparing for that in early October. So, so that lag time is real. Yeah. And so one of the things that uh, best practice wise, when I'm talking with shop owners on how to, how to overcome this is we talk about time blocking and what they need to do to make sure that they set time aside so that they can go and, and work on their marketing calendar and, and do these things. Um, can you think of any best practices from your side of it, from the marketing standpoint, um, you know, I know a lot of times the holdup on the marketer side is the shop owner hasn't approved uh, a proof or hasn't sent pictures over. But what are some best practices that shop owners can can do to make sure that they help out their marketing company as best as possible? Gosh, just talk to them. <laughs> that's that's one of the most difficult things to do is get people to, to actually talk to us. You know, shop owners are notoriously running around with their hair on fire. Um, and, um, you know, even, even the good ones, uh, like, you know, the best owners uh, still find themselves like that often. And it's very difficult for them to give the time to their marketers that they need. So, um you know, that, that is, that is probably the ultimate best practice is make the time to talk to your, your marketers. Uh, you know, we need to talk to our clients a couple of times throughout the month, usually. And the, the shops that make 
the time for us. They always have the best results in their marketing and the ones that never make the time for us, they'll still have results, but they could have been so much better. Right. And, and so I know because I work with you guys, we do a lot of stuff together and we have a lot of clients in common. Uh, you know, I know Danny from your team, when, when we're talking on the phone, we set up an appointment for the next meeting we have, whether it be next month, two months, three months down the road and all that's preset. It goes on to the, goes on to my, my Google calendar. How many shop owners do you think make that appointment with Danny and probably don't follow through and keep it percentage wise? Uh, percentage probably. <laughs> Gosh, I would bet 30, 30, 35% uh, don't follow through. And, and, you know, sometimes they will follow through, but they don't follow through at the right time, you know, at the, at the time that was originally scheduled. And, um, you know, a lot of times when we're, uh, when we're rebooking appointments, we're only thinking about us when we do that. We're not thinking about the other people that are involved. Danny runs a tight schedule. You know, she, uh, Danny's talking to 40 to 60 people uh, a month. She should be talking to 60 people a month, but inevitably there's going to be 20 of them that don't show up, never even make the appointment in some cases, but she has a lot of people that she's got to talk to every month. And then she has to relay that information back to the marketing team so that we can do the things that, that need to be done. So, you know, when, when they don't make that time that they've scheduled, it can, it can not only impact Danny, but even the, the marketers who are thinking, okay, I'm going to be getting information about, you know, X, Y, Z automotive that I'm going to need to do. And they have that on their schedule to get it done. And then they can't because the shop owner doesn't show. Well, and, and I just see that a lot with shop owners, like when it comes to hiring and other stuff, but I know from, from my aspect, Danny and I have the meeting. She brings her ideas. She reports, brings her ideas. I bring my ideas. Then she takes those and follows up with your team. Um, and then she, whatever, gathers all that information, then follows back up with me so that I know what content I need to create and what I need to do and, and everything that followed through. So if we're talking about timelines and lag time, if you can't make those meetings or you make them late, then it just throws the whole process off. And then again, your marketing goes out 45 days late and you can't figure out why you didn't get that out. So it's like full, full circle. Yeah. And you know, that's just the people that are working with marketers. Also, there's, there's going to be a ton of our listeners here that are, they're not working with a marketing team. They're doing these things them, themselves. That's why they're listening to, uh, you know, in our case, uh, you know, our, our podcast, anyway, if they're listening to ours, uh, you know, for those of you who are listening and don't know, this podcast is going to be put out on Chris's podcast, uh, which is the weekly blitz with Chris Cotton and also uh, our podcast, the auto repair marketing podcast. So, you know, if you're listening to it from the auto repair marketing podcast and you're probably there to learn about marketing and a large number of you are actually doing these things yourself. And the biggest thing that you can do that will make your job easier uh, throughout the year with your marketing is to, to have that plan. And, and we create a lot of resources. If you go to shopmarketingpros.com forward slash blog on the left side of the page, um, you'll see a, a column there that has some resources in it. And one of them is about creating a marketing plan. And I, I wrote this guide on how to create a real world marketing plan, uh, specifically about, I call it a real world marketing plan. And because when people think about marketing plans and business plans and all of that, it, it can be pretty intimidating because they're thinking about it from the standpoint of like how an MBA in college would do it. Cause that's how, that's how people teach you to do these things. But the problem with those is you create that plan. You'll never use it. If you actually even get through the process of creating it, because it's just this overcomplicated thing that it isn't really helpful in the, in the end, you know, whereas, the, the way that I've got this spelled out, it's, it is a real world guide to a common sense marketing plan that is easy for you to create and it's easy for you to follow so, so that you will actually follow it. And, and if you do that, it makes it so much easier because, I mean, we're talking about September right now. So in September, you're going to be doing your marketing that's for December, maybe even January in some cases. And then, you know, when you have those things like the state fair, and I don't know what it is about state fairs, but I hear from so many shop owners that the state fair impacts their business. And it did ours when we had our shop in uh, Apex, North Carolina, 
the uh, the North Carolina State Fair was right down the street from us, and man, it killed our business. So we started doing some some things to market around that time, and you know we were able to uh, to, to see some good results from that. It, and there, you know, I was talking earlier about how I wonder, you know, about your overall day to day marketing when you have to market around those things. Well, there are some things that you do actually have to market around, but you can normally plan ahead for those things. But if the state fair is in October and it's September, when you're thinking about it, you're too late. You know, that's something that you want to be looking at in July and and planning for that and taking the actions then that are going to make that marketing a success in october uh and that'll all be in your plan without a plan you're you're sitting there every month trying to guess what should i be working on right now with the plan it's all spelled out this is what i should be working on these are all the steps that i need to take this is going to be the end result. Well, and so this is the thing that gets me right. And and you said earlier, you said something about shop owners overcomplicating things, which we do 100%. We overcomplicate things, but also it's like somebody coming to you and be like, Oh, Chris, I couldn't buy my kids enough Christmas presents because I didn't have enough money. Well, Christmas comes the same time every year. Like I, like I can, I could probably go out, and Google it and tell you what Christmas day in 10 years from now is going to be same, same thing with the same mm-hmm. thing with the state fair, same thing with Halloween, same thing with Thanksgiving. And if you are not doing a marketing calendar for next year and then working on, it, or at least thinking about it, it's nobody's fault, but your own, I'm sorry, you know, we got to, got to beat everybody up a little bit on it, but you, it's your job to make sure that the, the right amount of cars are in the shop. And if you're not doing that, unfortunately, you're kind of failing. You're failing yourself. You're failing the the families of your employees and and your family. So, just a a somber throat punch to everybody out there that's not doing it this way, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's more than than just about marketing. Also, you know, it's when you when you want to grow your business, it can't be just a want, you know, there has to be a a plan there. You know, you need to know how many cars can you service before you're going to need to add another technician? How many technicians can you have before you're going to need to add another bay? At what point do you need to invest in the new alignment machine? You know, at what point uh, are you working with a coach? Hopefully early on, Um, you know, all of that, can be written out in a, in a plan. Um, I mean, gosh, everything in life, you know, your personal finances, if you don't plan for what's going to happen with them, that money is just going to go away. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really about having a great plan and then executing that plan. Right. But again, you have to make time for the plan. You have to time block it and and make sure it's available and and i will tell you your time blocking for marketing is one of these is one of the most important time blocks to do and and whenever you're you know you need to teach your employees that when when the boss is time blocked and he's and excuse me not him but they when the bot when the boss is in their office working on the marketing plan hopefully at least once a week um for at least an hour that they're not to be interrupted um, and you just have to, yep. it's one of those processes. Yeah, so tell, tell people a little about that. Tell, tell people about time blocking and what you mean by that and how they do it. Well, so, so the big thing is like, if you look at my calendar and I know Brian's, because again, we, I, I, I want to say we tried to, we got together via text like three or four times before we found a time that we could actually do this. Right. And then get it on our calendars. Mm-hmm. But, but, you know, everybody has a Google calendar. Everybody has the Apple calendar, whatever they, whatever they call theirs. And a lot of people try to block off too much stuff in the beginning. They're going to, they're going to block off like a whole week or a full day or two full days. But I always tell people try to block off an afternoon first or a morning. Um, a lot of the time blocking comes in when, when shop owners want to work from home a little bit. And I always tell them, make sure you do it in the morning from home Don't go to the shop in the morning and then try to get home to do the time blocking in the afternoon because something will always come up and you'll never be able to do it. So let's just let's just start with a time block in the morning. So if you were. If you were actually going in to the shop in the morning, 
then maybe, well, let me back up. So even my time blocks, I get up in the morning. I, I have like my wake up time. I have my read the books and the other things that I read. And then on top of that, I have, um, workouts and then the actual start of the day. So maybe you want to do that. Maybe you want to, the owner gets up at five 30, the owner goes through and eats breakfast. The owner gets to the shop shop owner, uh, spends an hour helping everybody get open. And th then after that, the owner, uh, has like 90 minutes to work on the marketing pl plan. And then another task after that. And then that's the morning. Just start with that. Just start with half a day in the morning, whatever you want to do, but don't, I guess my big thing about time blocking is don't try to do too much. Start small, start with half a day, start with the important stuff. And then when you do that for two months without fail, then fill out the rest of that day. And then when you do that for two months without fail, then add another day on either side of it and then work into filling out the rest of the calendar. Yeah, I know that the time blocking is important for me because, um, you know, I'm the one that produces about 80 percent of the, the content uh, at Shop Marketing Pros. And I'm not talking about the social media, you know, stuff. My, I have a, a team that does that, but I'm talking about the blogs, the podcasts, the videos. Um, I do more than 80 percent of that. And. If it's not on my calendar, it will not get done. So, you know, the, the podcasting, there's specific time on the calendar each week for recording the podcast. And look, we're not perfect. There are times where things have to, you know, they now, you know, I know that Chris would say different to, to respect the time block, but there are times where something will, uh, you know, have to take the place of that on my calendar. But uh, for the most part, I follow the time block. You know, I have certain times that I'm writing articles. Uh, you know, I might write a blog post uh, that, and, and well, I mean, I, I have time on my calendar to write a blog post. I have time to write an article for a industry publication. Uh, and those things are on the calendar each month. I have planning time uh, on my calendar for planning out the content that I'm going to be creating. Uh, then when it comes time for shooting the videos, I haven't, uh, I have a uh, videographer that I work with that we get that on the calendar. It is blocked out and that is exactly when we record those videos. But without doing that, the stuff just wouldn't get done. Right. And, and I understand that, right? Like, like life happens and things get in the way, but you need to try to stick to your block 85% of the time if you can. But again, if you never start, you're never going to finish. Yeah. Um, you have to make the commitment and really... Um, when I when we talk about time blocking, I also call that you're making appointments with yourself, and and your business is important. You're important. The things you need to get done are important, and you need to do that. Um, one of the things I have shop owners all the time. They're like, well, I need to go work out in the in the morning, but I can't, and then I feel bad because I I don't go. You know, if I go work out during the day, day um, I feel like my employees will see that. Uh, but you know, I tell shop owners all the time is like, you need to work out you need to keep yourself physically and mentally going. And so you block your time out for your weekly workout or whatever, or daily workout and just make it happen. Like there's, there's no shame in being an owner and you got to do what you got to do in or order to uh, be successful. A couple episodes back, I recorded uh, with a, uh, a guy named Scott Rusneck, and Scott wrote a book called The Entrepreneur's Field Guide, and he actually recommends that your workouts be part of your work week. Uh, he, uh, he has 50 hours a week blocked out for you know, what he calls his, his I mean, that those are his work hours, and inside of that are his workouts because he knows that the workouts are so integral in, integral to the success of his business that he just he makes it part of his work week it is blocked out he even has some time uh, blocked in there for doing some uh, uh, just the activities that he enjoys like surfing he will go do that in the middle of the work day to clear his head because he knows that when he gets back from doing that he's going to be more productive he's going to be more creative uh, and, and overall he's going to put out a better product for his clients if he is doing that if he's taking care of himself so like, like Chris said, have no shame in that. Be the owner, you know, have, enjoy those perks of being the owner, uh, but take care of yourself because when you take care of yourself, 
It's going to be better for your employees. It's going to be better for your clients. It's going to be better for you and your family. Absolutely. And that's why we're owners, right? Like to have these freedoms and to be able to do that. Um, I, uh, again, we're doing the peer group meeting this, this past weekend. And, uh, some of us got together and played golf on Friday. It was a gorgeous, um, golf course, Ozark national in Branson. If anybody's ever been there. And, uh, I did a video that I haven't decided if I'm going to share on social media or not, but it was really like, Hey, like you, if you're a shop owner and you're not doing these things, then, then what do you have to do in order to, to make this possible and, and really, uh, get where you want to be with the work-life balance and everything else. That's a whole typical, whole different topic though. Yeah. Yeah. So well, this has been good, Chris. Any, uh, any last words? Um, yeah, I was trying to figure out, I just did a, um, a podcast. I was trying to figure out which number this was so that I could get this out. Um, but it was talking about, um, shoot, mental mental health and physical health and things like that. I have to get it. Maybe we can put it in the show notes. I can't find it right now. But but yeah. really, the 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 big thing is is if you're thirty days or less from the time you're worried about marketing, you're too late. You have to make sure you put it on the calendar. So if if you're already hearing this and you're concerned about Halloween, I'm sorry, you're late. But the good thing is, is there's going to be Halloween next year and you can go ahead and put it on there now to start thinking about that in August, right? If not a little bit earlier, you can go to next year and do that. So um, think forward, time block. Also make sure that you're, you're working and driving on what's important to the business and don't get bogged down in all the stuff that, that you don't need to be doing. Uh, also, I would say if it's a big concern and you don't, you can't find yourself um, doing a lot of those tasks or if you've taken it on and can't get it done, there are great companies out there like Shop Marketing Pros that can help you with that and maybe alleviate some of that stress. And and really, um, deep down, you know what you need to do. You're just not doing it. So, you know, it's time to do what you need to do. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you to our listeners for listening to another episode of the Auto Repair Marketing Podcast. We are just one of five great shows on the Aftermarket Radio Network. You can find the rest of them at aftermarketradionetwork.com. Thank you again to RepairPal for sponsoring this episode. We hope that you'll listen in again next week. And until then, go fill those bays.